Hello, you're watching Bones and Stones, and today we are doing lies taught in medical school. Number one, hypoxic drive doesn't exist. Everyone knows that you aim for lower oxygen saturations in patients with chronic obstructive pulmonary disease if they are retaining carbon dioxide. It's usually taught that this is because of a thing called hypoxic drive, which is when patients have become so acclimatised to high carbon dioxide in their blood that their brains are now relying on oxygen receptors to tell them when to breathe. The implication being that giving them too much oxygen interferes with this balance. We've known for a long time that this is nonsense. The actual reason is a thing called hypoxic pulmonary vasoconstriction, which is the normal mechanism by which the lungs normally maintain an appropriate ratio between ventilation and perfusion. In lungs with COPD, there is reduced ventilation because of emphysema. So hypoxic pulmonary vasoconstriction normally helps keep the ratio between ventilation and perfusion in check. Happy patient. If you then suddenly ventilate all of these poorly ventilated spaces by pumping in oxygen, you will reverse this hypoxic pulmonary vasoconstriction. Damaged lung is still damaged lung, ventilated or not, so you've now increased perfusion to damaged lung that won't allow your carbon dioxide to diffuse away. Messed up VQ ratio, ventilation fusion ratio. Unhappy hypercapnic patient. What's really going on is actually a little more complicated than this and involves the Haldane effect, but that's the basic idea. Number two, giving Hartman solution in someone with hyperkalemia. You can actually do this. In fact, it's probably better depending on which studies you like and how good you are at changing your mind. Hartman solution only contains five millimoles per litre of potassium in it, which is barely worth thinking about. The benefits of the reduced sodium content compared to 0.9% saline, as well as the lactate buffer, much outweigh any risk from that tiny amount of potassium. And while I'm on the topic of fluids, you sometimes hear 0.9% saline referred to as normal saline, in which case you're obliged to laugh at whoever's just said that. One litre of 0.9% saline has the same sodium content as 36 bags of crisps. I don't know who thinks that's normal. Number three, GCS less than eight intubates. Well, it's not necessarily true, even if it does rhyme. It's actually a rule of thumb that stems from ATLS, so it's only for trauma, and even then it says, consider intubation. So let whoever is managing the airway make the call. While we're on the topic of GCS, the Glasgow Coma Scale, the authors were very clear that it was only for use in neurosurgical patients. Now it's somehow become the standard measure of consciousness. Because, you know, number go up, me publish paper. But only the MBIT is actually prognostically useful. And lastly, number four, medical misnomers, my favourites. I call these the Holy Roman Empires of medicine because in the famous words of Voltaire, the Holy Roman Empire was neither holy, Roman, nor an empire. So here's a few of them. An acoustic neuroma is not a neuroma and it doesn't affect the acoustic nerve. It's actually a schwannoma and it affects the vestibular nerve. A pyogenic granuloma is neither pyogenic nor a granuloma. It's a lobular capillary hemangioma. Leptomeningeal cysts are not cysts, they're fractures. Scleral icterus isn't scleral. The bilirubin deposits are in the conjunctiva, as you'd see if you just looked. And finally, ocular migraine doesn't exist. So, thank you for watching my lies taught in medical school. And if you liked that, tune in next time for lies taught to junior doctors. Have a good evening, slash morning. Why did I say evening before morning? Anyway. <laughs>